Hello and welcome to the Fit and Free podcast. This is a podcast for women who want it all, to feel strong and confident in their bodies, as well as enjoying a sneaky mug on a Friday night. I'm an exercise physiologist and sports nutritionist here to teach you how to achieve your body goals without food and your body controlling your life. So let's jump in. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode. I hope you are doing really well wherever you may be right now. I am super, super pumped on today's episode because this is something that I struggled with for so long. I literally remember sitting in my bedroom, getting on YouTube and YouTubing, how do I increase my calories without gaining weight? How do I eat more without getting fat? Because ultimately this was my goal. Like I felt so trapped constantly thinking about food all of the time, constantly restricting my calories. And then anytime I tried to eat more food, I would just gain weight. So I would just go back into that spiral of restricting again. And then of course, because I was doing everything in my power in order like not to gain weight, then also my relationship with exercise was really, really poor. I was riddled with guilt if I hadn't been to the gym yet, constantly thinking that I had to train every single day. And if I didn't train, I was going to, you know, get fat. Literally running from this undercurrent of doing my absolute best in order not to gain weight. So today I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what the hell do you do once you do lose weight? What do you do when you You know, if you're stuck in this cycle of restricting yourself and then trying to increase your calories, but every time you do, the weight, the scale just goes up and therefore you fall back into these restrictive ways. I want to talk to this. I want to talk to also have a conversation about if you are feeling guilty for having a rest day too, how you can manage that and how can you can really let go of these beliefs. Because at the end of the day, it's like these two things in itself are one of the biggest reasons why people do not get toned. They're thinking that eating more food, increasing their calories is going to make them gain weight. It's going to make them fat. It's going to move them away from their body composition goal. And therefore, when they get triggered, aka getting on the scale, they go back into these restrictive patterns. So therefore, self-sabotage comes in, bites us on the butt, and we're not able then to move through and reach our goal. So in today's episode, we are first going to be talking to the exercise piece, and then we're going to move into the nutrition side of stuff. Okay. And like, I get it. I really do because like we are literally in a world where we're conditioned to believe that more is better. No pain, no gain. If you're not exercising, then you're lazy or sweat it to shred it. Sweatier the better. And it's like it's all these beliefs that we've been conditioned to to form our own belief system. And then we might be thinking that running off the belief of more is better. More exercise equals moving to my goal. More exercise equals weight loss. And I can see how that makes sense, right? Like more exercise, calorie deficit equals weight loss. But one of the biggest problems is, especially if your goal is to tone, then you don't really want to be losing weight. (laughs) So this is the thing. If we're moving from these undercurrents of, I have to train every day in order to be successful, then if we're not training every day, we're going to feel fucking guilty about it right? And this is what I speak to like food rules. Food rules, right, is a reason why we feel guilty about eating a food. We can put this context in everything. And I've even noticed my own patterns and being really self-aware in and around this. It's like, it's the same thing. Binge restrict cycles happen with anything that we have rules around. Exercise is another thing that people create rules on. If I don't work out every day, then I am going to gain weight. And that's when you know you've got a rule in place, right? If you're saying something, if I don't do this, then X is going to happen. Especially if I don't do this and then a negative thing is going to happen. 
then that is a sign that you have a rule. And like duality here, right? There's always going to be positive and negative things. There is going to be positive rules and there is going to be negative rules. However, the biggest thing is if you don't realize your rule is actually a limiting belief, is actually something that's not true, but you're believing that and then acting in that out in that way. And it then becomes the problem because you know, you're running your life day to day and then all of a sudden you can't get to the gym and all of a sudden you're triggered as fuck and you feel really stressed and feel really guilty, but you don't actually understand why. It's because you're running from these undercurrent beliefs of I have to train every single day in order to lose weight, tone up. And that's the thing, right? Is like, until you're able to shift that belief of you do not have to train every day and it's actually training every day is stopping you from turning up is when you're going to be able to let go of the guilt and actually feel safe and in control when you are having those rest days. Because it's really easy to say to someone, it's just like, oh yeah, just don't train. But it's like, if you're actually running from that undercurrent of, if I don't train, I'm going to get fat, then that is going to be always the main driver of how you live and lead your life. And that is the thing that needs to shift in order for you to actually successfully change it. Okay, so how do you change that? Well, I love this conversation because like I already said, is like I was this classic exercising seven days a week and I've done a whole podcast episode about my relationship with exercise and you know the classic I use it to manage my mental health I do it to you know for stress relief however yes I was saying all these things and absolutely exercise can do that however I was getting riddled with guilt if I hadn't been to the gym yet I would you know not go out with my friends and I would cancel on them if I hadn't been to the gym yet. I was obsessed and fixated on the amount of exercise that I had to do when in reality, I didn't actually need to (laughs) because like I sit here right now and I'm like, I train four days a week and I look the best that I ever have, right? And I've got this pure food freedom, but it wasn't until I was able to shift that belief of, if I don't train every day, it's going to make me gain weight, was I truly be able to embody this full transformation? And that's why in the Fit and Break Academy, I am huge on understanding why you do what you do and we need to unpack it. We need to shift it so that we stop self-sabotaging and we can actually reach our goal. So how can you start shifting your beliefs in and around, you know, not having to train every single day? Well, First one you need to understand is how you reach your body composition goal, right? And in order to tone, you need to lose fat and build muscle, right? It's got nothing to do with weight loss. And in order to lose fat and build muscle, you need to be ticking off all the boxes in order to build that muscle. Things like eating enough calories and 1200 calories is not going to cut it. You need to be eating enough protein. So just focusing on those low calories all of the time is also not going to cut it because you're probably under eating protein and you're most likely probably under eating carbohydrates as well. We love the carbs. We want them. Energy. It's the vibe. And if you're not eating them, don't be surprised if you're binge eating, sugar cravings, no energy, especially in the afternoon. Then, of course, so we've got our nutrition, enough calories, enough protein. Then you need the exercise component. So this is the thing that's going to sculpt and shape your body. It's going to be the thing that increases your muscle mass and decreases your body fat, right? You can do nutrition alone, but all that will do is make you fluctuate weight without that exercise component. And, of course, it's lifting weights. And if you're new here to the podcast and you are under the belief, again, that undercurrent of if I lift weights is going to make me bulky, I really need you to go back and listen to my episode that I released last week, right? So then we got our exercise component. And then the last part of the equation, the checklist is our recovery, right? And if we are not recovering, if we're not doing any of those four things, actually, you're not going to see a result. That's why I I coach all aspects is because like, you know, you can go to a dietitian and you can get your 
nutrition prescribed for you. But if your goal is to change your body composition, aka build muscle and lose fat, like they're going to be able to help you with the nutrition side of stuff, but they are not going to help you with the exercise side of stuff. And you need all of it in order to be successful in changing your body composition. So it's important for you guys to know that you need to be nailing all four. And the last piece is the recovery, right? So if you are exercising seven days a week, how do you ever expect your body to recover? It's really common, like nagging, niggling injuries. You can't get over it. You lose motivation to train. You have low energy. Your training sessions don't feel like really strong. They feel like a bit of a like a of like an effort. Say like it's always an effort. Like you're never going in fresh. It's like an always like oh I have to do this. Um, I'll go back to that pain one. Pain one is a really big thing. Like it might be just a niggling pain. That you're like, you know, you can get by with it. Like you can still do your day to day, but maybe it's like every time you do deadlifts, your back gets sore. Again, that's a big red flag that you're not recovering well enough. And if we're not recovering, forget about changing your body composition because it's one of those four fillers that we need to master, right? How do you think your body is going to change? How do you think your body is going to build muscle and lose fat if it's not recovering properly? It's like the definition of interfering with your hormones and increasing your cortisol levels, right? Like exercise is a stress to the body. But yes, it's a form of de-stressor. But when you're exercising, it increases adrenaline. It increases cortisol. So your body is therefore in a stressful state when you're exercising. And if you're constantly doing that seven days a week, how do you expect to then be able to like feel your best and be a vibe and be excited about life when you're, you know, your body's always in that stressful state. So it's really, really important to look at and reflect on is that like, do I really need to be doing this much exercise or can I start doing more fun things in my life? <laughs> That's something I do with my clients all the time. I'm like, what are your hobbies? What do you do for fun? Like, yeah, I get that you go to gym, but like, how else are you fulfilling yourself in other areas? Right. Why don't you, you know, start to learn a language or read a book? Like that's something that I really took up is reading. And of course, cooking, like cooking for me is like, I love it. Um, But yeah, like we're spending so much time and energy into our food and our nutrition. Like, why don't we spend more time doing more things and fill up our cup? Okay. Because at the end of the day, we don't have to be doing this much exercise. So if you're feeling guilt, uh, a really good journal prompt to you guys you can utilize is like, why am I feeling guilt? What am I believing to be true? Like, why am I feeling this way? And reflect in on why you are doing that. What are you believing? Like, why? what's your main driver? And really unpack that and understand why. Because once you understand why you do it, is then you can be like, well, is this true? Is this actually true? And then prove it. (laughs) Evidence. (laughs) Have you got evidence to back that up? Have you got evidence that, you know, you will be successful training seven days a week? And if you haven't got results yet and you are still training seven days a week, uh, I suggest you need to look at it. (laughs) Okay. Now I want to move past that, past the exercise piece of this podcast. And I want to move more into the nutrition side of stuff. Because this is something that I hear all the freaking time. I've decreased my calories. I lost weight. But anytime I increase my calories again, I just gain weight. Anytime I just increase my calories, my weight fluctuated without my body composition changing. Like I'm still unhappy with what my body looks like because I still have a lot of body fat. I don't have that tone lean definition look. And the biggest thing here, guys, is the reason why this is happening more often than not is because it's normal for the scale to go up when you increase your calories after a calorie deficit back to maintenance. And the reason why is because simply you're eating more food and when you ingest food, it actually weighs something. So your total body weight is going to increase because literally you're putting more food into your body. The second reason why, of course, is when we eat more, the body holds on to more water. Every gram of carbohydrate we hold, every gram of carbohydrate we eat, the body holds on to water. The same with salt. If we increase our sodium intake, the body again holds on to more water. And then we can never forget, right, our hormones changing across our cycle. 
Like some people may experience increased water and salt retention around the time of their period. Again, increasing in body weight going up, right? The scale going up. And this is due to an increase in the hormone progesterone. Progesterone activates the hormone aldosterone, which causes the kidneys to retain water and salt. So of course, the scale will go up when we start eating more food. And that is normal and that is a good thing, okay? But of course, like you might be thinking that, well, why am I still not happy with my body composition? I just keep gaining weight and I feel gross. And this is the kicker because this is the stuff that needs to change, right? So if your goal is to change how much body fat you have in ratio to the amount of muscle mass you have, aka break free of the skinny fat cycle, more more definition in your body, then you need to stop focusing on weighing yourself as the main measure of progress. Because if you want to tone up, if you want to build muscle and lose fat, don't be surprised if the scale does go up. It is absolutely true in terms of muscle does weigh more than fat. So the scale going down is actually moving you away from your toning goal. Because it's this whole thing, right? It's like when we start focusing on scale weight as our main measure of progress, we think to ourselves and it's like, oh, what's the best way to make that number go down? I need to burn calories. I need to eat really clean this week. I need to be really good. I can't have any cookies. I can't have any brownies. I have to eat low calories. I have to eat cauliflower rice and zero calorie noodles. But it's actually all of those things, doing all these things is actually moving you further away from your toning goal of losing fat and building muscle. Because like I said at the beginning already, the four things that we need to master in order to do that is all of those things are actually the opposite of what we need to do. So the burning calories piece, it's like, why would we want to burn the food away that we need to build the muscle in our body? It doesn't make sense. Why would we constantly fill up on these low energy dense foods? It's not going to give us enough energy to train hard. It's not going to give us enough energy to make it through our work day. It's not going to give us enough energy to just be like, you know, civil as a person in comparison to being freaking hangry all the time, right? Like when we're constantly eating these zero calorie foods, you're not giving your body enough energy. So therefore it quick craves sugar like that's why we get sugar cravings because it's literally looking for fast energy and it's one of the main reasons why we're freaking hangry right you know that primal hunger when you like you know you ate lunch and you made like this really big salad like you know it's full of cauliflower rice and you know broccoli pumpkin all your greens and then some lean protein right you've got this big meal and you like after you eat it you're like you feel really full But, you know, one to two hours later, you're freaking starving and you could, you know, almost like get to the point where you're like, I'm going to kill someone. I'm so hangry. It's because when your meal wasn't energy dense, it didn't have enough energy in it. Sure, you got full because you ate a lot of fiber and you ate a lot of volume, but because of the fiber and the volume, there wasn't enough calories in the meal, therefore getting hungry, you know, two hours later. And this is this whole concept where people are like fucking confused because they're like, oh my God, I eat so much. I ate so much. Like, why am I still hungry? How can I still be hungry? I Have you seen the size of my salad? Like I eat so much food. Like I already eat so much. Like why am I not eating enough? And this is thing right we think that we're eating enough and we think that we're eating you know um, a lot of food but because our food is so low calorie and it's so you know full of fiber and micronutrients all the good things but it's lacking the energy that we need to make us through to the next snack or to the next meal so it's this in itself and there's these energy dips that we get. It's, it's not good for our hormones. And this is really common with people with hypothalamic amenorrhea. They do have these energy drops because, you know, they eat these large voluminous salads and things and make them nice and full and they stick to the low calories because then they can eat more without getting weight. But in doing that, it's actually not enough energy to support the body. So And again, like this is what people are doing. And like the reason why I can speak to this so clearly is because this is exactly what I used to do. 
fill myself up on low calorie food. So I had the illusion of like, yes, I can eat all of this food. My appetite is huge and I want to eat all of it. But, you know, walking into the house at three o'clock being absolutely ravenous. If I just build up my meal with a good quality carbohydrate, a good quality protein, a good solid fat, as well as all of the veggies, I wouldn't be walking into the house like I was going to kill someone every time, right? We think these extra calories is going to make us gain fat, but it's these extra calories that are going to give us enough energy and therefore be able to reach our body composition goal. Okay, so... Is this eating clean piece, again, is moving us away from our body composition goal because, again, not enough energy. Telling ourselves that we're going to eat clean and be good. Oh, God, I remember every Monday was, oh, Lord, you're going to be good this week. The weekend you blew out is shit. <laughs> and this is this whole piece of setting you up for a binge restrict cycle. And like I already said at the beginning in terms of the food rules, the exercise rules, again, being good, eating clean rules and anytime we have rules we're human we want to break them so what do we do it gets the thursday you walk in and then your client brings you brownies all of a sudden because you haven't eaten really anything so satisfying and and delicious all of a sudden you can't stop eating the brownies And I know it's terrifying eating a brownie every day, but I can't eat a brownie every day because, oh my God, I'm going to get fat. However, healthy integration of these foods is going to help you reach your body composition goals. And it's so crazy, again, because of our conditioning. You've got to eat clean. You've got to be good. You've got to be really healthy in order to reach these body composition goals. But I don't know, but like I see it all the time with my clients and myself included is like sometimes we take these rules to the extreme. Our perfectionism comes out and we're like, oh, we're going to be perfect. Everything has to be good. Everything has to be clean and I've got to be good. But you can't help it when like the day before your period, you haven't eaten anything satisfying for three days, like not one, like hardly any fat at all in your diet. And then your favorite client brings you some brownies into work and we've eaten them all. <laughs> So that's just it, guys. Like when we have the scale as the main measure of progress, aka you might be weighing yourself every single day, is we're going to be choosing to do all these things. We're going to be doing everything that we think that we need to do in order for that number either to go down or more or less stay the same. And this is where everyone is going wrong. This is why you just increase your weight when you try and eat more food because number one a lot of the time it's unintentionally and you just like you know a few more like you're being really good you're being really restrictive like we could use an example of the a 12-week challenge right you lose all the weight because like you you say no to social situations you're like oh no i'm in this challenge i've got to be really restrictive like and then maybe your training volume also increases and then you know for that and in body scan and you're like yes i've lost five kilos right so that's the first instant right like when it's over, you unintentionally increase your calories, right? You just start eating more naturally. You're not so strict anymore. You start eating out more. Maybe you're eating the foods that you weren't allowed to have. And then all of a sudden, you've just gained a little bit of weight again. It's like, far out. I'm just stuck in this cycle, right? So what do you then do? You do, you do another challenge. And you get restrictive again, right? And like restricting becomes the only way that you see any sort of result. The other situation is like you're eating these 1200 calories and then you try to increase your food, the scale goes up and it triggers the shit out of you. And then what do you do is you just go back to the low calories. You just go back. So what the hell do you need to do in order to have this success of being able to eat more and look better? And this is this whole concept of body recomposition. Stop using the scale and weight loss as your measure of progress and start focusing on body recomposition, aka building muscle and losing fat. Like you already know that people who look toned are lifting weights. You can literally scroll on social media and you'll see anyone that has a toned physique is at least probably two, three minimum of their training days is going to be resistance training, lifting weights. 
and you see them as well, if you're really paying attention, is they are not constantly trying to be in a calorie deficit. And that's the biggest thing. They are not trying to constantly lose weight. They're not doing these all in, all out things. They understand nutrition. They understand the principles of deficits and maintenance. And that's what they do. And in fact, you guys might be questioning, like, how the hell do they do it? Like I was, like I was Googling this stuff. I was YouTubing it. And honestly, guys, the secret to doing this is focusing on body recomposition. Because weight loss alone without building muscle is not going to make you look toned. Like how many times have you lost weight, but you are still unhappy with what you look like because you still have more body fat than muscle mass. And if you're constantly in these cycles of restricting, doing lots of cardio, I'm probably going to guarantee, I'm probably going to guess, I can never guarantee anything, right? Is that you probably don't have very much muscle tone in your body. Because in order to tone, you have to intentionally come out of a calorie deficit and eat at maintenance calories. I freaking wish I did this from day dot. I wish I started building muscle intentionally because that really was the kicker. That was the secret to having definition in your body is you need muscle. And if you're constantly trying to lose weight, it's not going to happen. So the question is, like, how do you ever expect to tone up, aka build lean muscle and lose fat, without ever taking time out of your calorie deficit to build muscle? It's literally impossible. And so what is the answer? The answer is body recomposition. Body recomping literally is the most effective way for active females to shred the last centimeters of fat and tone up their bodies and build muscle without freaking constantly thinking about food all the time. This is how you're going to eat more without gaining body fat. Right? And I've done podcast episodes on body recomping. It is a fantastic way for someone to go from, you know, burning calories, doing all the cardio, eating nothing to increasing their food, eating more, eating at maintenance calories, and then swapping the cardio for their resistance training. For a true recom, it involves eating right around at your maintenance. So what you're going to do is you're going to get to a weight where you're okay with, and then you're going to stop dieting and increase your calories and eat more. And with this is you're going to then actually change your body composition in terms of how much muscle mass you have and how much fat you have, right? So you're going to increase muscle and then decrease fat. Therefore, staying at the same body weight, but your body composition changes. So therefore, you look more toned. And like, I haven't made this up. Like, this is a real thing. There's a chunk of evidence supporting body recon as a realistic outcome even in trained individuals. Like there's a lot of research that's like, oh, body recomp only happens for untrained people. So people who haven't been lifting weights, um, of course it happens really well for them. So if you're in this boat or you haven't been consistent with lifting weights and following a program and actually applying progressive overload, it's like this is going to be gold for you. But even me, over, you know, the, my body is continuously changing from body recomposition. And this is the thing, like body recomp is so good and I'm so passionate about it. It's because we don't have to have these lengthy, you know, bolts and cuts, right? We can sit at maintenance calories and sitting at maintenance calories is fun <laughs> because you've got so much more room to move in comparison to a deficit. It's like a deficit, like you've got to stick to it. You've got to be a bit more rigid. You can't have as much food. Like you're literally starving yourself. Well, I don't want to say starving yourself, but you're literally eating less than what you're burning. So it's uncomfortable. It absolutely is. And then on the opposite end of like the bulks as well, it's like you have to force feed yourself to, you know, to build muscle. And that also is uncomfortable as well. And that's why I love body recomposition because with a really smart training program, if you know how to train in a good intensity and you've got good technique and you're, you know, following a really good periodized program as well as nailing your nutrition, then your body is going to change. And it kind of feels a little bit easy because you're eating a maintenance. Of course, you need to learn how to do all the things in the gym and train properly. And of course, you need to be making sure that your macros are on point. Like, let's not forget those details. <laughs> um, going back to the four things that you need to master. But it's just a beautiful way of being able to do it without having to like stress and force feed yourself. 
And that's just it, guys. A big summary of everything we spoke about is like the reasons why you are not, you're just gaining weight and still unhappy with your body is because you're not getting your nutrition right. You're not getting your um, macros right. You might not be getting your um, total calories, your maintenance calories right either. And that I do want to speak to that a little bit is because I see it all the time. It's like people are using these calculators and they're predicting their maintenance, but they're like 300 calories off really common for people to be putting in their data wrong if they don't know what they're doing okay and then of course they're getting their exercise wrong like if you're going to do cardio and burning calories and all of the things it's like your body composition isn't going to change and then of course if you're not resting enough if you're not implementing you know two even sometimes one rest days full rest days depends on how well you can recover from your exercise it depends um if you're not getting that right as well is the reason why that your body is also then not getting the shape and tone that you want it every time you increase your calories. Because it's like, yeah, you've got to increase your calories, but you've got to do all of these things right as well in order to be successful. So my loves, thank you again for being here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't left a review, please, please do so because it really does help me grow the podcast. But again, Tag me on Instagram if you're listening because I love to see it. So like brings me so much joy. Anyway, thanks again for being here and I will see you next week. Bye. The number one challenge that all my clients face before we start working together is a lack of clarity on how much and what to eat to lose weight. Often they are making two huge mistakes constantly trying to skip meals or eat under 1600 calories. Secondly, only allowing themselves bad foods like chocolate on the weekend, but end up binging or to tell themselves they're gonna start again on Monday. If you feel like you have tried every diet under the sun and still can't figure out what to eat to achieve your weight loss goals, take my free two minute quiz. You can find the link in the show notes down below and it will help you figure out exactly what you're doing wrong with your nutrition and exercise and exactly what to do to fix it so that you can finally be confident in your body and achieve your weight loss goals.